emotional story. I'm actually thinking about the story from the beginning. And it's quite an interesting one. It's interesting because I feel like God himself called me into Christianity. It wasn't a... Anyway, let's tell the story. So if you're interested, keep watching. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Vadekemi. If you're new here, welcome to this amazing home. I'm a Christian lifestyle blogger and YouTuber from Lagos, Nigeria. Um, if you're old here, my G's was popping. So I'm doing this video because it was a request from one of my previous videos. I like to look through the comment section and see what people are asking for. So it was a request and I also felt, you know, the need and the peace in my heart to share it. While I contemplated at first, like, mm, should I share it? Should I not share it? But I finally decided, let's do it. So... I'm going to start from the beginning as i said earlier i said that my story isn't like everybody's story you know everybody has a peculiar salvation story some people might have been you know drastically you know like there are a lot of people that their story is probably they used to club a lot they used to smoke they used to drink and then when they came into christ everything changed why for some of us it was a heart issue some of us were dealing with greed malice hatred you know all sorts of vices you know validation from others and then coming into christ we started to let go of those hard things and you know that those things those sins of the heart those i don't want to say sins of the heart but yeah those things that you know you do that other people can't see on the outside you know th that makes you look pious on the in makes you look pious on the outside but on the inside you know that you're not fine you know that there is no peace on the inside those ones are the hardest to actually let go so it's easy to say oh i was free from masturbation i wasn't dealing with masturbation i wasn't dealing with pornography but i had those malice greed um seeking validation from others pride ego i had it okay and yeah jesus changed my life yeah <laughs> so let me just dive right into the story but i want to tell the story from the beginning 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 like I, I was born like you know the progression so how was i born i was born obviously like everybody was born but when i say how i mean <laughs> i shouldn't be making light of this story because it's a serious story you know salvation story <laughs> but yeah i was born as a muslim not because like my parents were muslims in the sense of it my mom was a christian but my dad was a muslim not like muslim muslim but passive muslim yeah my dad was but my mom's father that's my grandfather was also a muslim He's, he actually died a muslim like the proper proper muslim guy so i was christian with a muslim name i don't know if that is okay to say christian muslim <laughs> i was christian with a muslim like i was given a muslim name basically and so that's where my journey started and i cannot remember the formative years ever being in church i cannot remember being five years old four years old six years old in church i can't remember to be honest but i do remember that i think there was a time when i used to go to Modrasa. that's ileke they call it Modrasa. because i really remember saying alif ba ta sa at least I remember those words, like I know those ones, but I cannot really say that. Oh, maybe like I grew up in the mosque, right? But I have a lot of family members that are Muslim, and all through my growing years, till like I was, I think 15, 14, I used to go for Ileya, Ile something called Ileya, that's Sala. I used to go to Sala, stay with my cousins, my grandparents. So, yeah, I have a huge Muslim family like that. So from there, I think like seven, eight, I remember going to church at like seven, eight, nine. Yeah, my primary age, like maybe primary three, primary four, when I became aware, I remember that I used to go to church because I was going to a white garment church that I did not like, that I totally detested. But my mom was going there, so I used to go there. But they used to mock me um, in school then. Because I don't know, at that time, I don't know if now it's still applicable. In that, those days, they used to mock people that go to white garment churches. So I hated it so much. I was like, Mommy, I want to change my church. I don't like this. And my mom tell me, No, you don't know. The white garment church is the best. They will see your future. They will be able to warn you about things. You know, white garment churches, they believe so much in this prophetic, you know, even though sometimes it's spooky. And sometimes it is familiar spirits. Sometimes. Yeah. 
anyway yeah so my mom is convinced me there so i'll just keep going but i did not like it to be very honest so i think when i got into um i think secondary school i remember that i think jess one jess two jess three i remember that there was this auntie that we loved so much and let me call her auntie jay auntie jay was a very very nice auntie she's played with all the children we loved her she was beautiful she was light skinned you know this auntie shada is nice auntie but she she was attending catholic and she was very spiritual or religious so she used to take us all of us that we are like we're in an estate so all of us that were the estate are estate babies she'd be like oh you guys come let's go for block rosary so she goes to catholic so she started taking us to block rosary and this was my first introduction into catholicism so i went from islam into white damage church into catholicism yo <laughs> so it was god just bringing me out little by little so i started going to catholic as a young person you know i think I think this was just to just three because I remember that senior school I was in another church. You. So you guys there see when I talk about all these churches, when I talk about things and Christianity, at least to the best of my knowledge, I'm speaking from experience. I and I started it say tickets. Anyway, I started going, at least I remember that I used to go for block rosary. So we used to say, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you amongst women. Blessed is the fruit of the womb, Jesus. Um, Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us now and forever. Amen. Yeah, so I used to um so I used to go to so trust me I was a Catholic person, I used to go for block rosary, we'll kneel down. Then then I used to be fascinated by the whole thing because it was weird just staying in front of a statue and praying and saying all these things. But I was a child and I enjoyed it because we loved Auntie Jay and Auntie Jay. I think Auntie Jay used to buy us something because that's the only reasonable reason for why children just decided to follow her to block rosary and then we'll tie this blue and white scarf yeah we tie it you guys i almost even started catechism class i think i even started i think saturdays yeah so from catholicism i think what happened my mom at that time did not really like catholic so she didn't allow me to go on sundays i only go saturdays i think during the week they do block rosary during the week in the evening yeah yeah, I remember they would just be like, let us pray for the world. The world is going through something, something. They will not hold the rosary. We will not be like, pray for us, Mother Mary. <laughs> what an experience, right? Anyway, at that moment, I still wasn't getting my grip I, on this Christianity thing. But I know I was still like, yeah, I, I obviously, in that period, I had friends that attended Deeper Life. So they'll come and tell you, wearing trousers is a sin. They'll tell you, thou shalt not lie, thou shalt not do this, thou shalt not do that. <laughs> so, by senior school, I now started, um, by senior school, I got my first introduction into the dating scene. I'm talking to my sister, one to SS3, that's senior school. So, I started, I think I had first boyfriend that time, Sha. I can't remember. No, I can't call that as a first boyfriend per se. Maybe just someone that we shall thought we were dating ourselves, that kind of thing. So yeah, I think that was it, but not really like dating, dating, like the way dating is when you become an adult. <laughs> we shall, we talk, okay, I think the guy was shall talking to me. Yes, I remember. I did not want to date him, but my cousin was his friend and they liked him because he had money. So they used to tell me that just collect it, just collect it. <laughs> so that's just my first introduction into being asked out and all of that. So from that moment, I started having people ask me out. And I think it got to my head to the extent that I started seeking validation in the talking state. I used to feel good with myself that was hot stuff. And if you're a teenager watching me right now, I feel like this is the one that I should even hammer on. This is the one that I feel like God, I feel like how many times? I feel like oh, another, I feel like. This is the one that God really, you know, delivered me from, you know, the validation and seeking validation from other people trying to feel good with yourself that people are asking you out feel good with yourself that you know other um people like you you always have people to talk to it doesn't mean that you are hot stuff it just means that you're available it just means that you're out there and while i wasn't having sex i must put that out there it doesn't mean if you've not watched my video on you know I talked about you know how my celibacy journey in one of my other videos i wasn't having sex but it doesn't mean that i was doing right right so this is one deception that the devil uses also you tell yourself oh i'm a virgin but your mind is not a virgin <laughs> so yes these are the things that you know i i 
I saw a change in when I became saved. But let me not skip the story. So SS, um, so I think at the point, Auntie J had to travel. I think she went to school or something. And then I went back to my CNS, you know, I was still going to CNS. Then I started having friends in Catholic Church. I remember that all the cool boys in my estate used to attend Catholic Church at that time. So everybody liked going there, especially 31st and 25th of December where they used to have 24th of December where they used to have this midnight service it was always cool so yeah all of that <laughs> yes I think that first guy too that was trying to toast me that I must attend that Catholic church I remember so anyway moving forward in senior school I started attending Redeem RCCG so from us all this point I was not saved I was just going to church so in RCCG, I was a terrible teenager. Guys, I suffered my teenager's teacher. Maybe that's why God made me go into teenage church and become a teacher after I became saved and I became a worker in the same RCCG. Because fam, this teacher to tell me, pray, dance, I'll be forming like, I'll just stand. So when I see teenagers that are, you know, rebellious and, you know, just feeling like they're the best things in sliced bread, I understand that being there, done that. <laughs> It's okay. You, you. It will get better, I guess. But yeah, I was not a nice teenager. I was a rebellious teenager. Not like I was insulting my teachers, but I really did not listen in class. I used to come late to teenagers' class. I was feeling like fine girl. You can't tell me nothing. <laughs> So from there, I wasn't still saved. Obviously, they used to preach, they used to try to talk to us, but to enter here and come out here. All this while, I now got into university. Good thing is, I was a smart student, so I didn't really, you know, I didn't stay at I didn't stay at home, so they couldn't use that one to preach against. Like you know how in in teenagers church, one of the things that they used to say is, oh. Um, stand, pray, you have to be close to God so you can get university. Oh, your life should be going smooth. But my own life was actually going smooth, even if I wasn't like a saved believer. And this is why, when I come to talk about God here, I try to tell you that your life going smooth or your life not going smooth has nothing to do with you know, sometimes it has nothing to do with your life as a believer in the sense of like you being saved is not because God, um. It's not for God to give you money or give you a good life or give you job. Even as a believer, you can get those things, but it's not the primary reason for why we are saved, right? So anyway, I got into university, easy peasy, did my job once, did my work once. But I know that in between then, my mom being a religion, my mom was going to a white garment church. Being religious, she would come and tell me, oh, this prophet said this one, this one. Initially, I would rebel, but I'll still do it because... I, I wasn't grounded. I didn't have spiritual authority. So I couldn't say no because I do not have anything to base my faith on. And that's the difference between people. You know how people say, ah, I just want to be saying, eh, they are born again, they are born again. If they are born again, they are killed then. It's because some people, some people just say no to the devil's request, but they don't have a spiritual backing. They don't have a spiritual foundation. They are just saying no. So it's important that you have a spiritual foundation to so you must understand who you are know your weight know what you carry in the spirit so that you can stand your ground so that being said 100 level 200 level i was still you know going about in university i tried to join a fellowship once but it was just because i wasn't in the hostel school hostel so i wasn't really into fellowship stuff and the friends that i had they were into fellowship stuff too yeah if you're my friend and you're watching this story but you know that it's true <laughs> they were i'm not saying they were bad people they were going to church their own churches but fellowship as it is they weren't fellowship people comment below um let's continue the conversation in the comment section and i will talk to you